It's one of those words employees truly hate to hear, outsourcing. And here's a term they don't want to hear either, H-1B visa. In the end, it's all about corporate greed. So let's explain. Our guest is professor at Howard University and a research associate at the Economic Policy Institute, also author of an article in The Hill that deals with this very issue. Welcome Ron Hira to Midpoint. Ron, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me on it. Ron, the more I read this, the more it looks like indentured servitude almost. And here's a lot of people out here who are being made to train their replacements, who are making less money than they are. And these people are coming in on visas. Something here is terribly broken. Yeah, you've got a basically government policy destroying American jobs, destroying the American middle class uh, under the guise of, of bringing in guest workers, you know, that supposedly we need, but really we don't need. Well, tell us how this works then, because there's a lot of people who won't actually understand what we're saying. You looked yeah. at information technology for Southern California Edison, and you mm -hmm. looked at a lot of what was happening here. Tell us about how these workers got replaced and what the greed involved here is. Sure. So there, there are uh, about 500 uh, American workers, IT workers, who at Southern California Edison, um, who were told uh, that they no longer, they will no longer have jobs. Uh, and not only that, that there were H-1B guest workers being brought in from India uh, to replace them. And if they, and they were required to train their replacements, something in the industry that's called knowledge transfer. It's a After public, already being told that they were going to be fired, they were given a specific amount of time, said, here, train your replacement or else. That's correct. And we'll give you a severance package only if you train your replacement. And if you refuse to train your replacement, we'll actually terminate you with cause. So you won't even be able to get unemployment insurance. You'd be fired with cause. And the reason uh, that they were forcing these American IT workers to train their, their replacements was that those replacements coming in from India were going to be paid a lot less. And we actually know exactly how much this was. The Southern California Edison workers were being paid uh, $110,000, and the uh, guest workers on the H-1Bs were being paid $70,000. So each worker, on average, they were Southern California Edison was saving uh, a 40 Forty thousand, which turned out to be about between forty and, and fifty percent, basically. So then, let's uh, call this what it is. This is pure corporate greed. Absolutely. This, and they made no bones about it. The South, the Edison uh, manager said, "We can find people cheaper than you," and so we will. But this is all legal. This is an HB one visa system that is approved, and the government gives it the green light. Correct. That's right. In fact, this is uh, not only legal, but there's lots of uh, proposals on Capitol Hill and even from the administration to triple the, the program. We're talking already about 100,000 new H-1Bs who come in each year, You're and, and there's about 600,000 here. They're talking about tripling it to 300,000 uh, coming in and 1.8 million here. You're, you're really going to be destroying a huge amount of, of jobs, um, including the U.S. high-tech workforce. Now, the GOP is going after this. What is being done? And then I guess the other side of this, because every time we get to one of these bills, these ideas, these concepts, we then have to ask who's standing in the way of getting this fixed? Because let's be real honest here. The most important thing we're talking about here is the survival of the American worker. Yeah, that's right. So this doesn't fall along party lines uh, neatly. There are some people in Congress, in particular in the Senate, who are taking the lead to try to reform uh, the program. So Senator Grassley held a, a hearing. He's the chairman of the Judiciary Committee uh, yesterday, as well as Senator Session, who's the chairman of the Subcommittee on Immigration. Uh, but you also have Democrats like uh, Senator Dick Durbin, who's the number two Democrat who's been pushing for reform. But they haven't done anything about this. Uh, on the other side of the issue is Senator Warren Hatch and a, and a bipartisan group of uh, Flake, uh, Klobuchar, Coons, Rubio, all trying to triple the number of H-1Bs. Uh, and really, this is all about money. Uh, big business, Forward.us, which is underwritten by uh, Mark Zuckerberg, about $50 million, uh, Bill Gates, all of these billionaires uh, in the tech industry are really just trying to get cheaper labor. Is there any lack of American-born talent that can fill these positions? No, it, and there's no requirement on the H-1B pr program to look for American workers. That's a huge myth that, that even senators got wrong yesterday. Uh, during the hearing, and, po and, and journalists get wrong all the time. You do not have to look for American workers first. And as we see in the Southern California Edison uh, case, they're actually replacing Americans. Uh, I think that's something that the Secretary of Labor uh, and the Obama administration has the right and authority to go and investigate. 
But they're sitting on their hands, too. They're choosing to do nothing. Reminder to everybody here, go to the Hill, look for the article. It's called Outsourcing in America. Ron Hira is the author, and it will really open your eyes to how American workers are being slammed on a daily basis. Ron, always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me on. Pleasure. Still ahead here on Midpoint, proof positive that it was one man and one man alone who ensured the victory for Benjamin Netanyahu. It's coming up later, right here on Midpoint.